Good day everyone, Gareth here from Organic Grow Melbourne. I just thought I'd do a video today. I'm just plodding around in the garden. I've had to take the day off because one of my girls is sick and um, with all this new COVID, um, you can't send your kid to school no matter what symptoms they're having. So I'm at home today. My wife will take turns and we'll, she'll probably take tomorrow off if she's still sick. But I just wanted to I'm just plodding around. I've done the, I've mowed my grass, and um, and what I'm doing now is my my line of work. I can I come across a lot of grass clippings, as you can see, and these will all go in the compost bins. This is the banana bin. This will feed the bananas. I've just planted these two. These were pups from last year, so there's that one there, and this little one just just there. I've just put them in the ground. Um, and this gets filled with all compost and will feed my bananas. Uh, and then I've got a couple more compost bins here too, just in between all my fruit trees, on top of all the mulch, obviously. But I just wanted to show everybody um, how important it is to mulch. Because um, while I was digging these holes um, to plant these bananas, this is essentially what happens to your mulch once you've been I've literally oh if I can pick it up that is one whole chunk of mulch and if you can see here this is all the mycelium look at that and it there's another bit here and you can see it it's just all all over the mulch that I've dug out but this stuff here the mycelium Look at this we break it up and have a look at that development there this is why mulch is extremely important because you're, you're essentially breeding mycelium and mycelium is one of the most important things when growing trees any type of tree but if you're growing subtropical and tropical trees like myself in a temperate climate, anything that's going to help your plants grow is going to give you a greater chance in successfully growing some of these tropical and subtropical trees. And even trees that are, in, that are for a temperate climate, they'll just be healthier. This, potent, this stuff here is an extension of the roots of the tree, all the feeder roots. It extends it and it supplies the tree with even more nutrients. This is nutrients right here. And as you can see, living in amongst it are worms. So I just thought I'd share that with you. But today I'm doing a bit of a bit of gardening. I'm gonna fill up these compost bins. Um, I've got a lot of grass clippings. Um, quite often I, I chuck a heap of grass clippings in amongst the, you can see them here now, in amongst the bananas. They're hungry, hungry trees they are. And um, and I'll show you what it is I'll be moving today. So I've got a pile of grass here. a pile of grass. <laughs> I got a lot of grass in the trailer. Right there. And I just cut the front lawn. How's that look? I do uh I do spend a lot of time on the front lawn. Nature strip over there. I like it looking good. Tell me what you think. So that grass will be going in the compost bins and around feeding the bananas. Again, another thing that's extremely important when growing lots and lots of healthy plants, whether it's natives to vegetables to dragon fruit, mulch, compost, I swear by it. Like I've, I've probably been doing this method now for 
probably five years now, I reckon. Maybe a little, maybe six, I don't know. And I've just noticed a massive difference in how greener, healthier everything looks. More disease resistant. I've been getting some messages about pests this year being really, really bad. Um, and aphids. And I have had no aphid, aphids yet on my garden. And I haven't I haven't sprayed for aphids. The only, the only things I've sprayed for is the leaf curl in the winter. Um, and, I, and obviously just fertilizers and, and a dynamic lifter. But someone was saying their plums were being absolutely annihilated by aphids, but, you know, the new growth, but there's something that's been eating that, but it's really not that much but I can't see any signs of aphids. If there are aphids, the first thing that gets attacked in my garden are these hibiscus. They completely surround the new buds of the hibiscus, but let me see if we can find any. I can't see any aphids on these ones. Nothing on there. There's a heap of new buds on this particular variety. This one's been flowering for quite a while now. There's some new buds coming up. Still, no aphids. This one's looking a bit sick, but it's just because it's come out of winter. Um, they sort of all behave differently. So yeah, no aphids, and you'd think, you'd think um, things like Yakon would, would be, be attacked as well, but the only thing that I have noticed I've had a lot of snails, but I've put snail pellets down, which is an organic, pet-friendly snail pellet, um, because they attack my, um, well, tamarillos for a start. So the tamarillos get attacked. But um, ever, si ever since I've put some um, snail pellets down everything seems to be going all right with the size of that broccoli there that's even bigger than the last one I probably get have to harvest that one so you can see the slugs and snails they'll crawl up and just chew off this outer layer here which is why a lot which is why some of these die this one this one copped it but since I put the snail pellets down, there's this new one that's come up which hasn't got any damage. There's another one there. This one here, I think. And then I've noticed a lot of dead snails around the ground. I think they've all gone now. I've mowed over them probably. Yeah, so I'm going to continue on doing a little bit of work. And maybe I'll continue this video a bit later, I think, when I've, when I've done a little bit of work. While I'm coming up here, I'll uh, let's have a look to see how many eggs we've got. It's a bit early, but... One. That's a fake one. Two, three, four. And we just might we might just wait a little bit, I think. We might get one more. I've been I've only been getting four lately. So I'll just wait a little bit longer. Coming to say hello. Oh, I'm gonna get into a bit more gardening. Stay tuned. <laughs> in a sweat. I filled the compost bins up. Um, they'll break down pretty quickly. And um, 
This is a good good compost bin, but if it had a wider opening, it'd be so much better. All right there. So I've got some heap of grass left over, but I'll put it around the bananas, around all those bananas up at the house. But something a bit different, I just thought I'd show you some of the other sort of things I do in the garden that I wouldn't probably particularly film. It's not really that exciting, but these are all the activities that you know need to be done when you're when you're trying to create a food forest. I still, I'd still want to get another compost bin to put in the middle of these two trees as well. And then, I doubt I've got the room for it, but I wouldn't mind trying to make a, a bay to uh, start making, start making my own compost. I mean, I can get it out of these obviously, but these were originally put here to pretty much just feed the plants and, and you know introducing all the worms and stuff at the bottom of that there'd be literally tens of thousands of worms all right thanks for watching everyone take care I'll see you in the next video bye